So this is the finished miniature. We're just going to be working on the actual Sergeant Ripper Jackson, not going to be concentrating on the base at all. I will be linking up two videos to the camouflage. And then once I've finished the video, this will be the finished miniature. Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulk Gun. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint up Sergeant Ripper Jackson. If you like the channel and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. So the first colour we're using is Citadel Wah Green. I'm going to be using this to paint up the armour plates on this. So you've got the armour plates on the bionic leg. We've also got a few little plates on the boot as well. We're going to paint up the t-shirt or vest that she's wearing under her flak jacket in the same colours. Now we're going to use Citadel Deathcore Drab. We're going to use this to paint the flak jacket. The miniature does use a lot of different greens on it, so I'm trying to keep them all slightly separate. Like so. Next up, I'm going to be using Vallejo Black. I'm basically going to be doing a lot of the parts that you would normally do sort of metallic. So like the handle of the chainsword, parts of the bolt gun too, like the barrel, the magazine, those kind of areas. Painting up the boot, any other little bits that you think of. I was going to be doing the aquilas in this, but I'll add the black to those a bit later on once I've painted the vest around them. Now I'm going to use Citadel Nurgling Green. This is the start of one of the camouflage colours, just like the wire flesh was at the beginning. So we're going to be painting the fatigues that she's wearing on her legs. Give these a nice coat of Nurgling Green. We can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to be doing all the straps and leather work and things like that. I'm going to use Citadel Bane Blade Brown. So this will be for the sling, the belt, the holsters, any straps, and the little bit that's wrapped around the body of the chainsaw. If you watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I love using Bane Blade Brown as the base for so many different leathers. It works really, really well with a couple of contrasts, so that's why these are all getting based in Bane Blade Brown. Next up, Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to use this to do all of the skin. So give that a nice smooth layer of Cadian Flesh Tone, or whichever flesh tone that you're going to use on the miniature. And then once you've got that on, it's a nice smooth layer, we can move on. I'm going to use Citadel Iron Hand Steel. Now we've painted most of the bits that are usually paint metallic with black on this. I'm trying to make them slightly more tactical. The Imperial Guard people I'm doing. So only really the blade of the chainsword and a few little details like around the bionic leg as well. Now a little tiny bit of Citadel fist on red and we're just going to use this to do inside her mouth. Now Citadel Rakar Flesh is going to be used to do her hair. I'm 
Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade begins all of the shading. So you're just going to give all of the skin a nice coat of this. You don't want to go too wild with it. You don't have that stark contrast between the shaded areas and the highlights and skin tones that we'll be putting back on. So just give this a reasonable coverage of Reichland Flesh Shade. And we can move on to the next shade. Shading the leather now, we're going to use Citadel Contrast Wildwood. This is to do the darker leather sections. So I'm going to do this strap that's going across the chest. With this to do a nice dark leather strap going across the shoulder there. Which then joins onto that kind of chainsaw holster that she's got on her back. So this section here that's holding it on, I want to do this as a nice dark leather. So we're going to use that on there. And she's giving that a nice coat. Time for the next shade, or the next contrast, as it were. So the next one is going to be Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. I'm going to use this on the remainder of the Bane Blade Brown. As you can see, these contrasts give a totally different look. One is very, very dark leather. The other one is kind of a tan leather, I suppose. But I do like the look of them when you've highlighted them and added a few little details to it. It does look really, really cool. We're using a little bit of Citadel Drucci Violet here, and this is just to do her mouth. So a really quick section. Just get enough of that in there to shade the mouth. And we're done. Another contrast now, this is going to be Citadel Militar and Green Contrast. I'm going to use this to do the flak jacket. Didn't really have any shades which would look as good going over the green that was used on it, so I thought I may as well use one of the contrasts. Because there's a lot of good contrasts that you can use, kind of as dark or thicker shades, which give quite a nice effect. I'm going to use a bit of Null Oil and do some really dodgy camera work and paint it off screen. So it's just painting up all of the silvery bits, so the bionic leg, the teeth on the chainsaw. That's about it. I'm going to use a little really small bit of Cassandora Yellow on the Rakarth flesh of the hair, like so. Slightly out of focus and slightly out of shot. Combo. I'm going to start working on the skin again now using the Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone. So what I'm going to be doing here is painting all the raised areas and leaving the shade in the recesses. You kind of feather that colour into the areas where the shade is. You can get a nice bit of dark to light without too much effort. Think about where the light's going to be catching those muscles. I'm highlighting those sections. So we are now going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to start highlighting these. Looks very, very bright that. It's really not. Once it dries, it is a lot darker. See that's starting to dry there. It's not catching the light as much. Now I'm going to add a second spot of Vallejo White to the previous mix. I'll just start highlighting these areas once again. Really is a cracking minute of this. Always wanted to do some catachans. But never really liked the miniatures that they had. But hopefully if Ripper Jackson is how they're going to go. I would be very, very happy if there's more miniatures with this kind of style to them. 
I'm just going to use Vallejo white and this is a really bad bit of footage so you're not going to see a thing just going to wave around a bit in front of you and then I'm going to paint the eyes and teeth just off screen so I've skipped the most of this but this is just painting the eyes dragging the brush from the nose outwards so that you get the eye and don't get any of those streaks over the nose and I'm just going to use a little bit of Vallejo black just to put the pupils in like so looks like the pupils going vertically on that right hand eye so I'll try and widen that up as we go along now we're going to use a tiny little spot of citadel pink horror just to do her tongue Like so. To finish off the skin, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Red Wash. And this is ideal for going over where there's wounds or scrapes on the miniature. She's got one down her face there. It seems to be focusing more on my finger than the actual miniature. Hopefully I shall move that back a little bit. You can look how focused it is on my finger there, which is very annoying. But you want to be going over all of the wounds with that red wash. That will give that a slightly sore looking colour to them. A little bit of inflammation around them. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of Citadel Militar and Green Contrast to do some cam cream in stripes down the face. I'm not going too overboard with this. You can see once it is all done that it does break up the shape of the face really nicely. Possibly a little too nicely for a miniature and a painting tutorial because once you've got all that camouflage on there it does kind of blend it in all a bit together. I can use a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown and we're going to start working on the camouflage here. I'll link up the two camouflage videos one after the other. One will be for the armor plates and one will be for the fatigues. The reason for that is the Astra Militarum I'm painting up are kind of like colonial marines from aliens, so it's based on those that the camouflage is coming from. And I've got videos for both kinds of camouflage up on the channel, so I'll link them up. Or if you want to have a look at the playlist of other camouflages that I'll be Add into that playlist in the future, it's called Camo Corner. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Thondia Brown, and this is going to be to add the patterns of brown to the fatigues and also the armor plates. Now, the fatigues have these little kind of spiky, thin areas of brown, while the armor plates have thicker, more blobby kind of brown with like little thin fingers coming off them. So they are slightly different kinds of camouflage on them. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh. It's going to be to add some thin sort of like lines to the camouflage top and the camouflage armour. It's slightly thicker than on the trousers. On the trousers you do have these really small kind of blobs and thin lines of Rakarth flesh. On the armor plates it's a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger area coverage. I apologize if you can hear any noise in the background here. Linnet 2 is having a mess about and because I won't give her cuddles while I'm recording she is attacking my chair. So the final color for the armor plates is Vallejo white. And in both parts, on the armor plates and the camouflage fatigues on the legs there, we're just going to be using a really thin brush to do thin lines of white randomly along some edges of the camouflage colours. It doesn't have to be every edge, just a few vertical lines here and there will break it up quite nicely. Like so. Next is Citadel Agraxair Shade, 
I'm going to use this to shade the armor plates and also the t-shirt or the vest as well. This darkens it down, gives the armor that kind of dark grubby look. On the t-shirt it just darkens it down, kind of blends all those colors together so it looks like a bit of shaded camouflage or a shaded woodland. Now it's time for a little bit of Citadel wire flesh again. I'm going to use this to paint the base colour onto the flak jacket. So thinking about where the light is catching it, you want to have those areas with a bit more wire flesh on than the others. I'm going to mix in a little bit of Citadel Warboss Green to lighten up the wire flesh. I'm going to do the first highlights on the flak jacket. You want to be doing about 50% of the area that you covered with the previous layer. Obviously leaving the shade in the recesses in the areas that wouldn't get much of that colour. Or much of the light I should say. Final colour for this, we're going to mix a little bit more Warboss Green with the previous mix to lighten that once more. I'm going to do some little highlights on the edges and on the corners and little areas that be catching more light than the rest. Okay, so we're now going to use Citadel Elysian Green mixed with some Deathcore Drab. We're going to start highlighting the body of the bolter. So it is mainly deathcore drab, it's just been lightened with the Elysian green here. I'm going to paint this about 50% of the colour that it was. So think about where the light is catching that. And add it to there. We're now going to use bit more Elysian green mixed with the previous mix and start doing some edge highlights just to make those details stand out. Like so. I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey. This is going to be to add some Small highlights to the areas that are painted in black, so like the metallic bits that would usually be on a bolter. They've all been painted black on this miniature, so it's a little bit more tactical. We're using the German grey to highlight those areas, thinking about where the light is landing on them, where the light could be catching them, and highlighting any edges and details to get the most of that. I'm going to use Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey, and this is just to do edge highlights on all of those areas in black. Apologies for some of the dodgy camera work, I'm not really too sure what's going on here, but it's not as good as I would have liked for some sections. But we're using this Mechanica Standard Grey to do edge highlights on the areas that we've just done the German Grey. So if there's a bit there that you think needs to be catching the light, just wang on a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey. So we're going to be doing the edges that where they'd be catching the light the most. This tends to be the top edges of any ridges. Now back to the Citadel Iron Hand Steel. We're going to use this to just do some really light scuffing onto the armor plates. So it's onto a bionic leg and a foot there. You're also going to do it on some of the areas that are painted black on the chain sword and also the bolter. Not loads, just a few little nicks and scratches on them. And just show a little bit of wear and tear, like so. Doesn't have to be even and precise, this. It just depends on where it had been scratched. 
now using a tiny little bit of Citadel Rakarth flesh. And we're just going to paint the hair, and this is just going to be in strips of Rakarth flesh going front to back with the Cassandora yellow in between, like so. So this is my finished Sergeant Ripper Jackson. Really pleased with how she turned out. It's a cracking figure, cracking pose. Really, really cool details on it. Really, really pleased with how she turned out. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.